Wavical is an award-winning data and analytics company based in Chicago with a national presence. As a provider of award-winning cloud data, analytics, and AI solutions and services, Wavical combines deep technical expertise and industry knowledge with the proprietary automation tools to support the rapid shift to modern data architectures, real-time insights, and AI. Wavical Data Solutions is proud to grow through almost 100% referral. With solid delivery reputability, proudly leveraging the ability to meet clients where they are to unlock the power of data. Wavical Data Solutions. Hello, I'm Dr. Beverly Wright, and welcome to Tag Data Talk. With us today, we have Hu Zefa Syed, who is Senior Manager of Data Science at The Home Depot. Welcome, Hu Zefa. Thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me. And I just noticed I've been you. saying your name wrong the whole time. <laughs> Huzefa, Huzefa. Um, so hopefully I got it sort of kind of right. <laughs> yeah, I think you got it right, okay. Huzefa. <laughs> Excellent. We're talking about applying AI technologies for business operations, which is a enormous topic right now that a lot of people are thinking about. So before we dig into how to apply AI technologies for business operations, tell us, why are you so cool? <laughs> I don't know if I'm cool. But, but um, um, I think I'm. Uh, I like doing data science. I like. I would like to think that I'm cool because of the work that I do. Um, but apart from work as well, like you know, I'm interested in uh, various activities outside of work, uh, which which might make me think I'm cool. <laughs> but I don't know if I'm cool. I, I I think people will call me boring. To be honest. No, you're a data scientist. We're all cool, man. Yes, I, love it. I would like to think that. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So um, when we talk about applying these AI technologies for business operations, um, what are we? What kind of business operations are we thinking about? Are there certain business operations where we can kind of look at it and go, oh, I can definitely use some AI there. And then there's other types of things that we look at and we're like, no, it's not going to work right now. Yeah, I think uh, AI technologies or data science can be applied in any business operation, all business operations, actually. Wow, really? Yes. Uh, I think we have definitely reached a level of data collection and data usage in these different fields, and it's applicable everywhere. However, of course, there are a few areas which can benefit like more in the short term mm -hmm. or are benefiting more right now mm -hmm. compared to others. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it can be applied everywhere. Uh, to list a few, I guess, like, you know, um, we are seeing how data has really um, changed the way customers' experiences, mm. their shopping experiences, yes, uh, shopping products and whatnot. Similarly, marketing is another area where data science or AI has played a big role in shaping how companies are thinking about their, their marketing strategies and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the company I work for, the Home Depot, uh, has data science or AI uh, integrated in almost all its operations. Mm -hmm. Pretty much everything. Pretty much so, everything. So, like, let's think about a couple of examples. Um, like, when I go into the Home Depot, because I don't shop the other place with the L word, <laughs> I only go to the Home Depot. <laughs> yes, that's the um, place to be. That's right. <laughs> and I'm looking around, and there's this little kiosky looking computery thing. And I walk up to that and it's helping me find a two handle, you know, faucet mm -hmm. by the mowing and, you know, this kind of finish. And there's a camera watching me in there. Uh -huh. Tell me about like, is that an example of the use of AI? Like, how does that how can that help as an example? Uh, yeah, that can potentially help. Uh uh, the Home Depot or the company understand how what customers are interested in and can suggest them what are the next things that they need to buy mm -hmm. in order to complete their project. So again, it's, it's a game changer, isn't it? With with customer experience. 100%. 100% it's a game changer because a lot of times it, and in a company like Home Depot and you know our focus is on helping customers uh, do projects by themselves and right. uh, create right. value for their homes. And when they're doing that, a lot of the customers are not educated on on how to actually execute a DIY project by mm, themselves. Yes, and, I am one of them. <laughs> so, so Home Depot and AI uh, data science can really help uh, Home Depot and understand, first of all, what customers need help in, and then uh, provide that 
uh, suggestion to the customers to get get them complete their project. Mm-hmm. Let's think about um, to to poke it, poke at poke at poke at this whole idea just a little bit. Somebody might say, "Yeah, but what about something that's highly human?" You know, think about an, a function, a business operation that's highly human. And the first one I think of is conducting an interview with a potential candidate. How can AI be used for something like that? Because we're kind of saying it can sort of go everywhere. Um, There are very few things, if any, that are not able to get improved in some way by AI. What's an example that you can think of or or some kind of commentary around something that's as personal and human-centered as like a job interview? Mm Mm-hmm. That's a uh, that's a good question, actually. Uh, and so the way I look at it is, uh, so there are, when you're conducting an interview, there are lots of variables that you're trying to identify in a candidate. Mm-hmm. And some of them are very hard facts about the candidate, like, you know, how they are maybe good at coding or what their knowledge is about data science, functional knowledge about data science and whatnot. But there are other factors that also play a role in an interview, like yeah. things like, for example, uh, you know, if this person, can I work with this person? If I'll be comfortable working with this person, if I have a rapport with this person, is this guy like uh, going to be a good cultural fit in the team Mm -hmm. and there are so those are the things that uh, that so when you look at it those are the things that might the AI might not be able to like help us in Mm -hmm. a short term Mm -hmm. and really like what but what can happen is there can be like a hybrid type of uh, a solution there where you have this uh, AI can automate certain tasks of an interview oh I see and then you can have humans fill in the gaps Mm -hmm. Uh, But that can make your interview process shorter, smaller. Right. right. Uh, So right now, like, you know, when you're interviewing candidates, it takes months for people. And that's not good experience for the candidates themselves and also for the the company. company. Right. Uh, but, I see, I see. But AI can play a role there and uh, can shorten that that list. Okay, of. I see. So we're saying um, most business operations at some point can get improved in some way by AI. And as a couple of examples, things like customer experience are immediately opportunities because it can be a game changer as to seeing a customer from a very personal, you know, personalizable kind of way. And then other things like um, interviewing a candidate that are that are fairly highly human, um, they AI can help with certain p- pieces of it that will help expedite and move it faster and that sort of thing. But maybe not all of it. Is that accurate? Yes, hundred percent. I I think that's the that's how I look at it. And um, again, like you know, when I you think about customer experience, there's only sky's the limit. Yeah. Um, so I'll, to give an example, uh, you know, I used to. Uh, if I needed to buy like a shoes, I used to go to a shop and I used to look at different shoes, try those different shoes on. I knew what I wanted like at the end, but I was still not sure what shoes will like actually fit me and, you know, will suit me well. Uh, now, I, I see a future where, you know, you'll have sort of like an email dropping by maybe in your inbox and which will have the exact shoe that you want or have will have the selection of three or four sh- four shoes that you want and that is like a game changer because it's saving so much time it's mm-hmm. saving a trip to the store as well so there are things like that uh, that that are going to revolutionize how mm-hmm. how how we as humans interact with the with our products and mm-hmm. services as well as companies okay and i mean some people even say it could get to the mind reading not just sentiment but actual mind reading and not just give you an email with the shoes, but they're actually at your front door. Right. You know, and it, it's even farther. So the 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 possibilities are, um, I want to say far reaching, but I'm, it's not that far away, I bet. You know, it seems like a lot of this is already starting to happen. Um, but if you think about the, uh, the purpose, you know, why would we want to leverage more AI to improve business operations? In what ways are we improving? Um, it sounds like, if I'm hearing you right, that this is reducing expenses, um, becoming more efficient, and uh, serving customers better. Uh, is there a component of improving revenues? That Yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, there, there are definitely uh, those business keep, 
KPIs as well, which which can help you uh, grow your business more. Uh, so there are all this uh, customer experience and you know ease of operations, all of those things. But then there is also those hard facts. The financial numbers mm-hmm. can also be helped improve with AI because, like, so for example, uh, you know you might be let's say your company has like hundred, uh, I don't know, ten million uh, customers, mm-hmm. and you're emailing those ten million customers every every week or every day about what products they want. Mm-hmm. Uh, and each of those emails will cost you some type of money expenditure. Right. right. And uh, But if you use data science or AI, you can actually, you might not have to talk to all those 10 million people. Like, you know, maybe the customers don't ha- have that need of your products at this point of time. Mm-hmm. So you can uh, talk to only certain number of customers. Mm-hmm. And uh, if, 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 if you do that, then you're reducing your cost of operation Mm -hmm. And then you're also improving customer experience because Mm -hmm. now your email is not being considered as a spam. Right, Uh, right, right. And that's another problem. Like, you know, the company over message, then they start moving you into different folders. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, I think that's something happening. I mean, HubSpot did this survey, I think, uh, and it's available online. And they found that like uh, the people, the reason why people unsubscribe from certain emails is because of 50 more than 50% have said that they receive too much emails. Oh, in that yeah. So that's a problem. So it, that's that's one example where it's benefiting the customer, improving customer experiences as well as the also revenues. improving the bottom line of the yeah. company. Yeah, that makes sense. So somebody listening right now might say, well, my company's not doing any of that. Why not? Why are, why are more companies not? I mean, the Home Depot is like, you know, y'all are doing some really cool stuff. Like most of people I know at the Home Depot talk about how cool y'all are. But there are plenty of companies out there that are just trying to figure out where their data is and just trying to get it clean and organized and, and centralized. And they're not really leveraging in, you know, in, in another way like this and certainly not using AI on it. So what's what's why are more companies not leveraging AI to improve their business operations? What's the barrier? Yeah, yeah. Um... Yeah, that's a, another good question. And I think about that a lot, why this might be happening. So when I'm running a company, let's say if I'm running like um, uh, a camera company, mm-hmm. my goal uh, in, when I'm running the camera company is maybe to sell as many cameras as possible and uh, to maybe make better cameras and whatnot. So the goal of the company is like, you know, it, it's very focused. The leadership is very focused maybe on those two or three goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they And they might not be paying attention to the way they are maybe doing data collection, data curation, uh, data governance, all these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, So it might be like a secondary uh, priority for the company's leadership. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that might be because, again, their goals might be different. Mm -hmm. Uh, So so if the leadership starts paying attention Mm -hmm. uh, to collecting the data, curating the data, governing the data, making sure that the, their customers are comfortable with how they're using the data, then those are the companies I see are going to be the companies which will make a dent in the future. Mm. Uh, so, so that's the one key, huh? Okay, you're hearing it first, y'all, um, that if you have good data, those are going to be the ones that it's not about anything else, really. You're saying that if you have the great data, they have more opportunity for leveraging AI. Isn't that funny that we're having this conversation in 2024 and we're still talking about data? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Excellent. That's a, that's really the key though. Like, you know, uh, if you really want to apply da- data, uh, then you need to have good quality of data. Without, without you paying attention to the data, you're yeah. not going to get the results. So a lot of companies might, oh, there's a big buzz coming around. So let's try and apply this technology. But then it does not produce the same results to them. Mm-hmm. And the reason why it's not producing the same results is because they have not really paid attention to this behind the scenes process of right. data collection. Right. And uh, then it's not, it doesn't yield yield and these AI projects fail. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, it's blamed on the AI, but it's not. Re- it's, so you, you have to think in long term. And I think the CEOs of the companies need to think about uh, data curation a lot more than they do r- right now. But if you keep digging back upstream and you find the root of the issue, a lot of times it's data. If you keep digging and you go back upstream, if you're looking for the success, a lot of times it's the data. Yes. That's very interesting. Um, so to finish us off, if people are listening and they're like, 
gosh, I just want to do, I just want to do something with AI to improve business operations. What final piece of advice would you give to somebody who's trying to leverage AI for business operations? Yeah, so I I would say that like so first mistake I see companies doing is so they see a fancy or a a new technology come up and they want to like directly apply that to solve something, uh, but the, but that's not the right way to go about in my opinion. Uh, I think the right way to think about these technologies is first looking at your own business operations mm-hmm. and where where they are, what's they currently, uh, what what they are getting out of it, mm-hmm. and then how can they take that from point A to point B, then deciding what technologies can get them to that point B. So you need to start thinking about the business. And again, like I, if I can talk about so many examples where you can, uh, with using the current uh, technologies that are available, you can take this, your data, uh, your operations to the next level. You just have to decide, but you have to decide that based on which will give you the easiest maybe return on investment to get you started on the journey. Love it. Love it. Very nice. Very good advice. Thank you again to Huzafa uh, Syed from the Home Depot for talking to us about applying AI technologies for business operations. Thank you so much for inviting me, Beverly. It's a, it was a pleasure. Thank you.